Well, you might hear the term wasteful spending from some as Congress now works to come to terms on that massive $3.5 trillion spending bill. Our next guest, however, will tell you you don't have to wait. There's plenty of wasteful spending happening right now. From marijuana industry bailouts to combating child labor in other countries, Adam Angieski from OpenBooks.com joining us now with the Waste of the Week. Adam, welcome back to the National Desk. Good morning to you. Good morning. So this is interesting. Marijuana bailout. I want to talk about that first. In 2016, California legalized recreational marijuana. It was thought to be a huge moneymaker for the state. That was part of, of the push for this, right? You say it's actually costing the state money. Why is that? Well, it was supposed to be a big moneymaker, but what happened was the California lawmakers layered on a ton of bureaucracy, large taxes, and today there's about 10,000 shops selling marijuana legally in the state. However, it costs about $250,000 to bring their temporary license to a permanent license, so only 700 shops have permanent license to sell weed legally in the Golden State. And so the cost of this has been so expensive that now California is going to spend $100 million in taxpayer money to help these shops defray their costs and become permanent shops. So, I mean, with that in mind, the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy estimates that California has raised about a billion dollars from marijuana sales in 2020. So would you say that the legalization of marijuana is still a net positive? I mean, a, a, a billion dollars in, in tax revenue versus the hundred million in spending, could you call it just the cost of doing business? Well, still about one out of every five sales are made legally through a legal uh, dispenser of marijuana in the state of California. So this could be a lot larger for taxpayers. Taxpayers could be reaping and government could be reaping a lot more money if they didn't have all of this red tape regulation and the cost of doing business so high. Nationally, on states considering legalizing marijuana, California's held out as the poster child example of actually what not to do. Right. So but so they are making money. You're saying they could be making more. Is that a fair yes. statement? Okay, great. So legalizing marijuana, you know, in theory was supposed to also lead to fewer arrests and drug-related crimes. Has Open the Books looked into that aspect? Uh, how has it affected illegal sales there in California? So arrest statistics in the state of California show a steep decline in uh, arrests for marijuana-related crimes, for drug-related crimes. Uh, so on that basis, um, I think that law has lived up to expectations. All right, so let's shift uh, focus here a little bit now. I want to talk about U.S. Labor Department spending $10 million going to Central and South America for workers' rights there, as well as gender and racial equity and tackling unregulated fishing. Now, this is work done by the Department's Bureau of International Labor Affairs. You call it a waste. Tell me more. So who knew, who knew that our domestic Department of Labor actually had a separate bureau dealing with international labor. Look, this is a domestic department of labor engaged in foreign aid. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the devil's always in the details. So we dug into how some of the $100 million, $100, the $100 million out of this International Bureau was being spent. And it's for unionization in private sector industries in foreign countries. So it, whether it's in fishing, whether it's in some of these other industries, it's purely and simply the Biden administration is taking our taxpayer money domestically, sending it overseas on large million dollar grants to help workers in other countries form unions to negotiate against their employers. But, but let me let me play devil's advocate here. And we got to do this quickly because we're running out of time. Can you draw a link between that spending abroad and impacts to Americans here? For example, you know, is doing this helping us with immigration here to the United States? Is it helping us Americans with access to food when you're talking about the fishing issue there? Does it benefit Americans? So, so here's what we know. Here, every single dime of this is borrowed. And so we can argue whether it should be done or not, but all of it is borrowed against future taxpayers as our national debt careens toward, toward $30 trillion. All right, Adam and Gieski, controversial topics. So uh, we want the viewers at home to let us know what they think. You can check out uh, openthebooks.com. You can also uh, give me your thoughts on Twitter at Eugene Ramirez. Adam, thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.